sitting in a pandemic like now, everybody's threshold is at a different stage. And just concern with the way the world is and, and unknowing comes out in, in a lot of different ways. And I think that urge to metaphorically scream and not feeling heard is really where that comes from. My name's Gary Simmons. I'm currently living in Los Angeles. A figure that appears to be screaming in the frame, actually its original source, I believe might have even been singing. There's this kind of rupture that happens when you take something from its source and isolate it like that. It can almost imply a certain kind of violence. That hopelessness, that feeling of uh, screaming and not being heard. It's a common feeling of a lot of folks. That's really kind of the genesis of where Screaming Into the Ether came. In this particular show, I think there are a lot of details uh, in the work that at the time I sort of thought, oh wow, how is this gonna work like showing work online? One of those moments that you see a shift happening right in front of you. And if you're not on board, this thing's gonna run over you. And the gallery, I think Metro Pictures was like spot on and pushing for this thing to go through. When I first started to make work, a lot of the work was drawn from early race cartoons from the 30s and 40s. And, you know, they were very specific commentary on race and uh, racism. Over time, as I said, you know, working for 30 plus years, you're almost like forming relationships with your work itself. Those cartoons that I dealt with were at the very earliest stage of my personal development. Also, I think that they begin to take on a life of their own and the, the, the definitions start to move and shift and the way that you develop your visual language starts to really form the way that I choose my images. I think that all of the implications that were there from the cartoon series actually become embedded into the image because of its use of erasure. Cartoons have always been used as this, this tool of humor to get across a very sharp message. And I think that a cartoon sort of creates a kind of environment for somebody to deal with something that's very heavily politically charged and use humor as a kind of undertone, I think that there's an, an after effect of what these images had on folks long years after they were in use. I'm not particularly interested in using current or recognizable uh, cartoons as a kind of pop cultural reference. I'm more about a kind of period. I think my work functions in between abstraction and representation. With the act of erasure, when you draw an image or you paint an image, and you blur those lines of, of definition, I think that the, the viewer is forced to fill in the gaps. When you look at one of the images that I try to deal with, a lot of those are composites of a lot of different figures and architectural references and things like that that are kind of mashed together, almost like a DJ would put together different songs. And I think that within black culture, we are forced because a lot of our history is kind of a verbal history passed down. There's bits and pieces that are left out and abstracted and we're forced to fill those in. And that place of unknowing is the place that I'm really interested in, in teasing out.